Hello everyone, I'm Don Smith and we are coming to you from the Channel 36 studios in beautiful downtown Clark and today's show, a very special show, we're going to be talking to small business owners as well as those folks who would like to start a small business and joining us here in the Channel 36 studios is Clark attorney Mitch uh, Beinhacker and Mitch, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thanks for having me Don. So where do you want to get started first? So let's get started maybe um, with small business. Yeah, you want to start with uh, maybe a Business owners just getting started. Yes, they're opening a store. Okay, they're good. starting an office. Right. So if I want to open up my own store here, let's say we'll we'll stay in Clark, right? Right. And we're going to sell whatever it is we're going to sell. Okay. Okay. So, um, so there's a lot of people that start a business, maybe yeah. even from home nowadays. Mm -hmm. Sure. And they kind of get going, and they're just using a name, and they're they're what we call a sole proprietor, right? They don't have a company, a corporation, an LLC. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and it's not. It's okay to do if it's kind of a hobby. But it's not the best way to do it from a legal standpoint, from a liability standpoint, from even a tax management standpoint. So as you start getting going and you rent a store or you open an office, you should first kind of get what I call your governance documents in order. Okay, so governance documents is a funny term, but it's it basically what you use to run your business or your mm -hmm. company, sure. right? So you should, of course, in either incorporate the company or set up what's called a limited liability company, which is kind of a hybrid of a couple of things. You would get a certificate from the state of New Jersey. A lot of that stuff is um, online nowadays. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, I believe, the state launched their website. It's called uh, business.nj.gov, which is like a more personalized portal to all the services that are online, which to a certain extent might put me out of business, but it makes it easier <laughs> for right. small businesses to yeah. navigate and to do things. So you can get your certificate online, you get your tax ID number, you open a bank account, you start doing business in the name of the company instead of in your own name. I see. Okay. If you have a partner, mm -hmm. you should have agreements in place that say who does what, what if we don't disagree, what do we got to vote on, what don't we vote on, what happens if somebody wants out, what if somebody gets sick or disabled or hurt or died, unfortunately. And a lot of those things happen and people don't have those documents in place and then it's just a free-for-all, it's just a mess. Those are what litigation cases are. Right, and, are and you know, in the pre-show notes that I was going through is that you say get everything in writing. How yeah, important is so that? That's gotta be like one of the top things. It's so important that I told you I wrote a book about it, right? Yeah. So um, it is the most common problem that I find when I'm brought into a situation and somebody's having a, a partner dispute or they're having a problem with a customer or they're having a problem with a vendor, they don't have anything in writing or somebody they put money into a business for a friend, right? It's very common with small businesses. You're not going necessarily getting a loan. You sure. might be, mm -hmm. but often friends and family kind of help you get started first. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that stuff is done a little bit of loosey goosey, a little bit of shake your hand, we're buddies, mm -hmm. and then it kind of falls apart. So whenever there's a problem, people come to me, I, as an attorney, and certainly if I'm in court in front of a judge, I kind of have to show like, well, what was the agreement between the parties? If you have text messages and you got emails between each other, it may help, but it's going to be a mess because there's nothing that says, hey, listen, this is the final agreement between us. Mm -hmm. Nothing else applies. You can't say to me, Mitch, I know I sent you that text message, but don't you remember that discussion we had at the burger right. store joint, uh, you know, three weeks <laughs> yeah. after that? Yeah. Like, no. And one of the biggest problems is, and I, and I interviewed uh, in, my, in my book uh, a memory expert, is that we don't remember things correctly, ever. Our minds are not file cabinets where you like put sure. things in separate folders. Mm -hmm. Our mind is a big box with sticky notes that get stuck to different things. You know, we go out 10 years from now, you'll be sure you were interviewing someone else here today and <laughs> I was in some other studio in another town. Yeah, yeah. We just don't remember right. things. So if we don't have things in writing, it just leads to just big problems with people spending a lot of money to fight over sometimes very trivial things. So you should be, you should have partnership agreements, right? When you have multiple people in the business, you should be doing business with customers in writing on a contract. Now you can't always do that if you own a grocery store, right? Right, because that's not the way business yeah, is done. Yeah. But if you if you're if you're contracting for services, professional services, or or somebody's hiring you to, to make something for you or for mm -hmm. them or vice versa, yeah, you should be doing business in writing. It also applies to vendors, you know, and the people that you buy from and that the people you sell to in the B two B kind of world. So I'm a big, it's boring, but I'm yeah. a big stickler for having things reduced to a writing. Into writing. So now, the clarification for writing, you mentioned text messages, emails. Would that be considered uh, writing? I mean, you know, against things are so electronic yeah. today that you know, we don't really do a whole lot physical paper kind yeah. of writing. It doesn't so, have to be printed on a yeah. piece of paper, but it shouldn't be 
like a stream of text messages so back between and forth, you and, the and vendor I'm going to somehow create yeah. a contract right. out of that. I see. It should be at least uh -huh. something electronic that we agree to, right. um, either confirming it via uh -huh. confirming emails or uh -huh. e-sign or something like that, where, because this is the biggest problem with those kind of agreements, right? I get into situations where they do have an agreement, but one of the people went to law school, doesn't practice anymore, the other person did, they drafted their own agreements. Okay? Uh, and the, there's two halves to an agreement. The one right. is when everything's going well, and the other half is when things aren't going so well. Mm -hmm. Well, the going, not going so well part is always missing. What do you do if there's a dispute? How do you resolve it? Do you go to arbitration? Do you go to mediation? Do you sue each other? Who pays for attorney's fees? All those types of things that are left out of these agreements. So those will not be in a stream of text messages. What law applies, you know, all that kind of stuff is in a contract, even if it's a detailed contract, like if you look at these click licenses, when you sign up for a website or something, yeah. those are contracts and you really right. should read them, not that any of us do, do or have right. time, <laughs> but you know, you're, you're deemed to be, in, with some exceptions, to be, you know, have read those things and you're agreeing mm -hmm. to them. So click licenses work, it's just, yeah. you know, you wanna make sure people are acknowledging that they actually read what you're putting right. in front of them. So some of the stuff now, folks, we're going to talk to you about, you know, it's basic stuff, but it's very important. So let's talk to you about the name, the name of the company, the name yeah. of the store. What's the procedures that you recommend for people to go ahead and choose a good name for the store? Obviously, a lot of people like to use, you know, clever things, or whatever, but right. that could be being used by somebody else. That right. Well, that's always, a, so that's always a problem. What, what do you suggest the procedure that we do? Yeah. So, um, a lot of people do that. They start out, they like a name, they, they do a quick Google search, they don't see it anywhere. Doesn't mean somebody else isn't using it. So, and, and I'll, I'll preface this by saying I'm not a patents and trademark attorney. Mm -hmm. I help people out with trademarks, but sure. I work with some local yeah. people that do. The USPTO, which is the United States Patent and Trademark Office, has a very good, very consumer, uh, you know, layperson website that is very friendly. It's uh, like USPTO.org or something, maybe .gov, I don't remember. And uh, they, they, you can search their database very easily to find out if your name is being used or was used or the, the marks available. It doesn't mean that when you get started, you got to spend several hundred dollars and trademark your name, but at least have an idea of what's out there. Definitely a Google search. If you, if you file the name, you create the name with the state, so you set up a corporation or an LLC, if there's another name in the database, it will give you a conflict doesn't mean if it's in a totally different industry, you know, you're in the, in the floral business and this is something totally unrelated, you could still get the name. You just might have to do, go through some manual steps to, mm -hmm. to get the name. So a lot of people, they file, you can also file a trademark, not a trademark, a um, doing business as certificate in the county, but that only protects you in the county. Right. It also only protects you within the state. So if somebody's in, you know, Tennessee and they're using your name and doing business, you're using it here, they're using it there, they file the trademark, they can't stop you from using the name if you've been using it prior to their application, but you can't stop them and they can stop anyone else. So you kind of want to figure that out ahead of time before you've been using your name and it's on all of your stuff. It's on all your letterhead or Everything. it's on the front your of the store. Your yeah. store. Yeah, the front of the yeah, store. Forget about it. <laughs> and I've had c clients where somebody literally walked into their store and said, you can't use that name really? because wow. we use it and we yeah. own the trademark. Wow. Wow, and they have to change. Yeah, the change. So yeah, yeah so that, definitely that, something you want to look major, at. That's a major, you know, I'm sure that's a major cost after the if fact. If you have a sign on your building, yeah, yes. right, yeah, you got to change all that and all everything else that goes along with. It. Yeah. All right, so we got our name. Now, what are the types of businesses? The the different styles of business. I'm not sure how to phrase that right. The sole proprietor, the LLC. Let's go yeah, through so different that. Different types of entities. Entities. Let's call them. Yes. Okay. okay. So let's start so with that. So a sole proprietor is, is not yeah. an entity. It's it's yeah. you and I doing business alone, mm -hmm. and we're just doing it. If we were doing business together. We can't be a sole proprietor because we're partners. Um, there's something called a partnership, but it doesn't give you much liability protection, mm -hmm. right? We'd still be sued personally. If the business got into trouble, we did some things that were inadvertent, right? Obviously fraud, I could say that, that if you commit fraud, you will be liable right. no matter what. No matter what it is. Yeah. Right. Then, uh, then there's corporations, right? Mm -hmm. We can buy stock on the public exchanges in corporations mm -hmm. that are what are called regular C corporations, and they're large corporations, Microsoft, Amazon, all the big ones. Um, and then there's local corporations. You can set up your own corporation. So many years ago, they created a section of the code called Subchapter S, if you hear the term S corporation. Yes. Basically gives you a little bit better taxation treatment under the code if you make what's called an S election. So it's not a special company, it's just an, a tax election. What it does is avoid things like double taxation. Like with large corporations, they issue dividends to their stockholders. Those are not a deductible item to the corporation. Right. Well, if you're a small business owner, 
and you have to issue a dividend to yourself, you're going to pay tax at two levels as, an in, as a person, so you get double tax. S-Corps get around that. But there are some rules with S-Corps. Only individuals can own them. It can only be up to 35 people. So there's, there are some limitations on S-Corps. Then about, I used to say 10 years ago, but that was probably more than 10 years ago now, maybe 15 years ago, states created an entity called the Limited Liability Company. I'm not sure which state it started in. It might have been Delaware, but New Jersey has it. Most states have it now. And it is a combination between a partnership and an S-Corp. It's like having your cake and eating it too, mm -hmm. which you really can't do most times. Yeah, right. But in this case, you can. Mm -hmm. So an LLC, which is my preferred choice of entity for small businesses, allows you to set up this company, get all the protection that you do like a corporation, but not have to deal with all the S-Corporation rules that make things difficult to account for and you know, manage from a, from a legal standpoint. So mm -hmm. it gives you all of the, the best of both worlds. And um, you also get to create all the rules. Like with corporations, there's a lot of legal things and traps you got to go through with the law that you have to follow a lot of formalities. Right. LLCs don't have formalities. You create your own formalities. You write an mm -hmm. operating agreement. So mm -hmm. that's, those are the different. So those are the basically the, so there's sole proprietor, there's LLCs, and there's corporations, either S or C corporations. Okay. And there's general partnerships. So you don't see those yeah. too much anymore. So, the, so the, let's just say the majority, I don't even say the majority, but a small business here, I want to open up in Clark. Let's just say I'm opening up, I don't know, a pet store or something yeah. like that. Okay. Would it be what LLC. I, LLC, yeah. that's pretty much what I you mean, there are, some, there are some CPAs out there yeah. that still say, oh, I like S-Corps, but I'm partial to LLCs. I, don't uh -huh. know, I like them. But there are some limited exceptions to do an S-Corp. So now let me throw this example at you. Let's say if it was more of a, not so much like a storefront or selling goods, but it's more service oriented. Like a professional service? Professional service. Either Probably you can say an architect or an, or a, an accountant yeah. or some sort of tutoring business or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it would that. usually be an LLC. Mm -hmm. I mean, professionals in certain industries like law, architecture, accounting, they're still personally liable. That's why you have to have errors and omissions sure. and malpractice insurance. Mm -hmm like doctors too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, probably LLCs. Some medical practices, you'll see professional associations, professional corporations, those are taxed like at a mm -hmm. flat, I don't know, 35% rate or something. Mm -hmm. But and it's all, very often the CPA that drives this more than me. Right. Yeah. Um, but from a liability standpoint and a management, from a legal standpoint, I like LLCs. So now you also mentioned about in our pre-discussion about opening a bank account. Yeah. So what are some of your tips for that for the small business owner? Yeah, so you need to obtain account. a tax identification number mm -hmm. from the Internal Revenue Service. It's all online now. Uh, you can go and get it within 10 minutes. For some reason, you only do one a day. But So as a lawyer, sometimes I got a lot of things to do. I got to do it one <laughs> yeah. day and next day, next yeah. day. Um, and you need your certificate of formation, which you can do through the uh, biz.nj.gov or whatever, or you can call me or some other lawyer. Mm -hmm. And um, th and then uh, you need, let's see, what else would you need? Those are probably the two main things you're going to need. They might want an operating agreement if you have partners. If not, they have forms you can sign. And then you get going, you want to get checks, and you want to make sure that you do business as the company, not as yourself. Don't sign things personally. Sign them on behalf of the company. You may have to guarantee things, but always doing it in the, in the name of the company in the bank, business bank account. Don't be paying your personal bills through your account. Right. There's been lawsuits where people sure. got sued, they end up personally mm -hmm. liable because their whole right. life is really just exactly. going through the yeah. LLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to be careful about that. Right. So open up that bank account, you know, have the letterhead, have the, the name of the company on right. it. And, you know, set up your credit card. Set up the credit card. That, that was account. the next thing I was going to ask you is exactly. if you want to set up a credit card in that, in that business's name. Just to, right. I guess really to put that kind of wall between you personally and whatever the business that you're Very trying much to start. So. Exactly. So, so you're on either side of that wall. So if something does happen, you're not the one that's going to be responsible. Right. Or even from a tax standpoint, standpoint that and it's the a clarity. There's a, a delineation yeah. between what your business expenses uh -huh. are and what your personal expenses are. So you don't, you know, a lot of people mix those things. Sure. Yeah. As a business owner, it's hard to, yeah. especially nowadays with things are so electronic it's not like everything in writing and yeah. uh, people are charging things all over the place mm -hmm. but you, for the most part you want to make sure you keep good records so you if you do get audited you can say no these are my business expenses mm -hmm. and these are my personal expenses and you don't right. have any any issues and maybe you do want to set up a separate account for taxes because as a business owner you probably have to pay your own taxes nobody's you're not a w-2 employees nobody's withholding from you a lot of people forget that, and then at the end of the year, they're like, what do you mean I owe taxes? Yeah. <laughs> well, because nobody's taking it from Nobody's you. taking it from me. It's the right. disadvantage and the advantage of being a business owner. Right. Got it. So, so, so Mitch, we are here in uh, the Brewer Municipal Building in downtown yeah. Clark. 
um, if I'm going to start a business here in downtown Clark, what are the things that I maybe would need to go see someone in the town hall about? What are some things uh, that may come up in yeah. my beginnings of my new business here in Clark? Yeah, well, two, two comments about that. One is whatever town you're doing business in, you should always check with the municipality because mm -hmm. they may have a lot of resources that support new businesses in town, whether it's the Chamber of Commerce or the, or the administration and check. And I know Clark has some great resources uh, for that as well. But um, there's certain things you're going to need approval for. If you have a, a retail store, uh, there's towns always have signage requirements as to the size of the sign. Can it be lit? Can it not be lit? Can it be so, so high off the ground? All those types of things. And you want to make sure that you would, you're adhering to those rules because if you don't and the sign gets put up and you don't get permission, it's hard to ask for forgiveness afterward. They might make you take it down and change it. The sign people should, if you're dealing with, generally know those rules, but you should you should look them up as well. Also, you may need um, approval just to operate. A lot of towns require you to get a permit for the use that you're bringing to that store. Even if it was the same business use before, you still may need to get a, a, per, a permit or a Possibly under a different name. If you take over right. a business, you just have to change the name. Then right. You're going to exactly. put everything in, in your new businesses. Right. Uh, letterheads and like if you took structure. over a business yeah yeah that's a good comment actually usually generally when you buy a business you buy the assets of those businesses you don't buy the company mm -hmm. so any of the permits and the approvals that you had would go with that company you want to make sure that you talk to the town now some towns are very easy to work with some towns are very difficult to work with yeah. so you know they make it easy and they say don't worry about it we'll just transfer it over and some of them you have to reapply and then there are situations where you go to the zoning official and say, hey, can I do this here? They say, yes, you might be able to do it, but you need approval from either the planning board or what's called the, board, the zoning board, the board of adjustment. And that gets, as we probably do a whole, class, a whole show on land use, but you, you're gonna have to file an application with the town, probably pay some fees and get approval. But it's worse if you do it and then have them show up and say, hey, you, you don't have permission to do this. You might have to go in front of the planning board and make a presentation mm -hmm. tell them why this is good and you know why you, need 10 parking spots, but you only got five because right. nobody in town has enough parking, you know, right. that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But the ordinances are what they are. Yeah. So, so it's best to get sure. that information first before you decide yes. to do something, and then it's going to be a whole lot more financially, it probably is going to be a lot more expense to you and just your time and And, and some things you can't do. I mean, a town official can only, they can't change the law. Yeah. So if the law says, uh, you know, if you're operating a pet store, it can only be in mm -hmm. 5,000 square foot or less, and you or setting up a 7,500 square foot building and you don't get permission to do that, yeah. good luck. Yeah. You can't chop off 2,500 <laughs> square feet. That's right, that's right. Yeah. So you also mentioned about another thing to remember is between what's the difference between an employee and an independent contractor. So give us the differences between okay, those Okay, so this two. just came up the other day. So the, with an independent contractor, it's like you know, hiring your plumber, or hiring your accountant, right? You, you just give them a check and they pay their own taxes and whatever. In most situations, if you have somebody working for you, you don't get to choose whether they're an independent contractor or a W-2 employee. And the state has some very stringent rules you can search. You know, how do, how, what are the classifications of W-2 employee? It's like an ABC test. If you meet those three items, they're independent, but generally you don't. So I, I deal with a lot of industries, and I won't mention specific industries, that it's been the, it's been the practice of those industries to pay people as independent contractors. Well, the state doesn't really like that because they feel that employees get more protection under the law than independent contractors do, which is true. And they tend, the Department of Labor tends to go after businesses and find them when they don't do the right thing. So when it comes to, so if somebody's working for you, even if they're commission-based or they're salaried or they're hourly is a better example, and they, they just, you know, they come and go and they work for you part-time or whatever, it doesn't mean that they're an independent contractor. They really have to have their own business that's doing business with you and doing business with other people, right? That doesn't mean like if you're a dance studio yeah. and you have, which is very common, and you have uh, dance teachers, instructors, and they all, all, all these people work at multiple studios, right? They don't yeah. get enough time to work just at one studio. Sure. They're all W-2 employees. And that's an industry where it's very common, just a common practice, yeah. no one knows any better. Everybody's treated as mm -hmm. independent contractors. They're mm -hmm. not, and, and you get on the Department of Labor's radar, you'll get a very large fine that you're then going to pay me a lot of legal fees yeah. to negotiate down right. to hopefully get them to reduce hopefully, it. Yeah. Since it was more of a mistake, I didn't know, you didn't mm -hmm. do it intentionally, yeah. but they, they, don't, you know, they, they don't like that. So you want to take a close look at, just because the person 
is you know you want to hire an independent contractor you got to pay close to be real that they're really independent that they're really independent that they actually have their own right. small business or their separate company that you're going to hire actually them. do yeah. business with other people other other right. businesses either whatever the space that you're in that Correct. they're doing has total uh, control of their time they make their right. hours and 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 that's the trap that business owners fall into and those can be big right if you have you know I don't know, 20 or 30 people uh, that are independent contractors, they get reclassified. You can end up with a 20 or $30,000 fine, which is a lot of money to a small business sure, owner. Sure, of course. You know? yeah. And yeah. they're not going to give you a payment plan uh -huh. either. Right, right. And you know, and even in the TV world, and I mean, I've been doing this a long time, you know, a lot of companies and stations, they use freelance employees. Yeah. And then, I mean, for the most part, most places do take out taxes and they consider a W-2, but some don't. So that's where you kind of, I think, have to be careful even on your end, too, as far as to take the taxes out and do all of that accounting work. Correct. So you don't get yourself in trouble as well because they're not going to be responsible. I mean, it's going to be on you Correct. that you haven't, uh, you know, paid your fair share of the taxes. So it's a, It's going to be kinda, both. You haven't paid your taxes. That's right. The employer side. It's exactly. Be a mess. So it's a real kind of fine line, but then it isn't. Right. So um, something to definitely keep in mind. So now. If we wanted to hire you and your services, your firm, what are some tips that you can give some of the small business owners? Like, what to look for? What are the questions that they should come and ask either yourself or somebody? Or what are the, how to navigate the legal end of things if they want to start their own small business? In terms of hiring an attorney? Yeah, like how would they come? You know, come well, to you? Well, certainly experience is important, right? So you yeah. want an attorney that's you know been practicing for a sure. significant period of time because time has a way of. I mean, I've looked at hundreds and thousands of transactions. So um, when if you want to write your own contract, you'll do mm -hmm. it once. Yeah. I've done it hundreds and hundreds of yeah. times. So you want an attorney who's experienced, um, you know, not somebody just, I hate to say this, but not somebody who's just graduated law school and they hung yeah. a shingle, they probably should go yeah. get some experience working right. for a guy like me. <laughs> um, but also, you know, when you, I think, I think it's very important that you can, that you have a good rapport with the attorney that you're going to work with because a lot of people make the mistake of not building a relationship with a lawyer. They do with their CPA because they have to file their taxes every year and they may have quarterly things and stuff like that. With lawyers, they kind of wait till there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And your lawyer will keep you out of trouble and make sure everything's cross, you know, set up, yep. right? Cross your T's, dot yep. your I's, sure. that kind of stuff. Plus, when you have a problem, my clients, like I know their situation. They don't have to spend 15 hours while I figure out all the things they've been mm -hmm. doing wrong because I've been monitoring and working with right. them. It might be on a retainer basis mm -hmm. where they pay you monthly and you do extra on top of that, yeah. or it might be just, listen, let's just, you know, when I need you, I'll call you, but I'll pay mm -hmm. you. But build a relationship because, and you want to like that person, like trust them and know that they give you confidence in what you do, that they're protecting you. Because at some point, something's going to happen, right? You're going to get sued. You're going to get something from the Department of Labor. You're going to get something from some other state agency. Yeah. And you're going to freak out. Mm -hmm. But if you have a lawyer and you say, what is this? Um, by the way, I'll make one quick comment. Yeah, sure. When you set up a new company, like mm -hmm. an LLC or corporation, yeah. you will get more junk mail about you know, trademarking, <laughs> yeah. getting yeah. a special certificate. Right? Right. It's all garbage that you don't need. If you look at the fine print, they're not government agencies. Yeah. They've created a name that makes it look like a government <laughs> agency. They're trying to sell you things you don't need, yeah. so don't fall into that trap. Okay, uh, we've got a couple minutes left in the show, so let's kind of give a recap, kind of come full circle here. Yeah. Let's just say, what are some of let's say five tips that you think are important for a small business owner to to yeah, put me on the first. spot right here? Exactly, right okay. there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So first thing, yeah. don't ever operate as a sole provider. Okay. Right. I prefer the LLC. Talk to your CPA about it. it. Might be an S corp or an LLC. In some states, ironically, like New York, they have some weird publication requirement for LLCs. Like you got to publish the name of the newspaper for ten weeks. You don't have to do that with S corps. I have no idea what political issue came with New York. New Jersey doesn't have those issues. So know the laws in your state. The second thing is, if you're going to have a, um, or maybe that's the third. No, to be. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see for the video <laughs> tape. Um, if you're going to have a brick and mortar store, mm -hmm. like a retail store or a biz or a office yeah. business space. Don't just assume because you talk to the landlord, you can move in and get started. Talk to your town. Check with the town because I get more people that are setting up shop and they said, I just got a call from the town about signage and I didn't know you need permission to do that. You need permission to do everything when you are operating, holding yourself out to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing I would do is when you get set up, so you set up your bank account, you get your tax ID number, not in those orders. You get, so you get your certificate, tax ID number, business uh, account. Make sure that you are clearly doing business as that entity, that you put comma LLC after your name or Inc or Corp. You can choose those different things, but that you hold yourself out properly to the public 
and that you put your business expenses through your, bi your business account, you put your personal expenses through your personal account, if you take money out of the business for your personal stuff, that you market as such, keep good records, and so forth, because that's the biggest Achilles heel. If you get sued, the first thing the attorney wants to look at is saying, hey, how can we go after this guy personally? Mm. Maybe he didn't follow all the rules, yeah. and they want to see all that stuff. Right. So you do that ahead of time. So, yeah. Great. All right, Mitch. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for it's having been, me. It's been fantastic. A lot of great information. You know, we want to rewind it back on YouTube or watch it again, DVR it on, on, on the local access station. Uh, certainly do so and uh, go back and uh, rewatch any of that part. You know, just so much great information for, and, you know, there's so many people who want to start a small business that they, you know, these are great tips if they wanted to do it right, to yeah. do it the right way. You know, and there uh, are good resources out there. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I watch a lot of podcasts and things like that. And I know you also have a podcast. That's why he, he, he's such experienced, uh, <laughs> one of our most experienced guests that we've right. had on here in Channel 36. Certainly. But, you know, they say, you know, do you want it done right or do you want it done right now? Yep, you're right. You know, and, that's, correct, and, and yeah. that's what you want to do. You want to get it right. You want to get it correct right from the beginning and not have to worry about stuff And people, uh, later sometimes on. they don't want to spend the money, but they end up paying more later to fix it. So. Exactly. So it's either pay now or pay later, right. one of the two. So Mitch, thanks so much for joining us. I want to thank our creative director, Phil Scardilli, for this wonderful uh, set here today. I'm Don Smith. Thanks for watching.